So let me take you one back, one minute back to the, the problem. By 2050, there will be 10 million people every year dying from antimicrobial resistance. How can nitric oxide help? So nitric oxide kills bacteria, viruses, fungus, drug resistance, bacteria, all of them. Sanitize has developed a formulation that can be delivered as a, as, a, as a nasal spray, a liquid, a gel, a cream that can kill all these bugs. And I'll show you a few little samples and promise not to get too much into the science. Take bacteria, drug resistant, three types of drug resistant bacteria within five to ten minutes. Complete kill from a very high concentration of bacteria to zero very fast acting. It's all depending on the dose. Get the higher we go with the dose, the faster we can kill the bacteria. And this was all done in the lab, but we've also done that in clinical and in the clinical setting in a wound model that I'm showing here. Infected wounds with lots of different types of bacteria, all of them about three log reduction within seven and a half hours, which is an amazing result in a clinical setting. And just so you can believe me and see how it works, I cannot show you how I kill the bacteria that you all have on your hands right now. But what I can show you is how we do this in the lab. And I'll show a short video where we put the bacteria in a plate, we take a hand, we dip it in a high concentration of bacteria, and we put it on a petri dish, which is how bacteria grow. did it with a hand sanitizer, your positive control, you're all using hand sanitizers these days all the time. And then we repeated it with our nitric oxide releasing gel and with our nasal spray, the nitric oxide releasing liquid. show here the four plates, the positive control, we expect nothing to grow, the negative control, lots of bacteria. And if you look at the two plates with our treatment, just a few seconds of rubbing your hands and it's all gone, nothing. So the other thing is, other big threat we're talking about these days, I don't have to say much about it, is the pandemic. Interestingly, the WHO on January 13 this year said countries invest heavily in protecting their people from terrorist attack, but not against the attack of a virus, which could be far more deadly and far more damaging economically and socially. So how do we deal with that? This is, again, lab experiments where we show how we take influenza, H1N1, different types of influenza, and we get complete kill within minutes with just the liquid, the nasal spray that we're using. This is an animal model. We put viruses into cows' noses, and the two on the right are controls, all the rest are treatments. No virus was found in the nasal passages of the cows. Unfortunately, I cannot really show you how I get rid of influenza with a photo in human, but what I can show you is warts. It's human papillomavirus, warts caused by a virus. And you can see it's a 12-year-old girl with a lot of warts all over her feet, tried everything and nothing worked. We did a few of our foot bath treatment, and within a month, it was all gone. The pain actually went away within 24 hours. So we're hoping that nitric oxide is the future in treating all kinds of different infections. And Josh, maybe you want to come and try. Do I have to take my shoes off? No, you don't. <laughs> I promise not to give you a foot bath. So, <laughs> but I can give you a nasal spray. So you're telling me if and I... And I can give you a gel to rub on your hands, which is much better than the alcohol that you do. So you're telling me that if I use the nasal spray, if I use that, I could... Basically, I won't, I'll be protected from H1N1 and other pandemics are going out there. Yes. Yeah, please. <laughs>
So you rub this on your hands. Unlike the disinfectant that we are all using all the time, more, 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 more. Thank you. this <laughs> is based on a natural molecule that we all have in the body. It's no alcohol, no, well, you can use this on your nose. Josh, if you smell too much, it works like Viagra. Oh. <laughs> he said if, it's, if I put too much on, it works like Viagra, so. Which is nitric oxide is the be, active ingredient. I'll be sure to call my doctor if <laughs> four hours, you know, not a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Microorganisms are very clever. They replicate quite rapidly, and they adapt to their environment. Viruses need intact cells to reproduce, to use the machinery of that cell. And as the environment changes with exposure to antibiotics to kill them, they adapt and survive and they become resistant. Antibiotics are used so freely now by the farmers with chickens and pigs and cows and even in patients. And we develop these superbugs that are resistant to all of our present antibiotics. Because they mutate and adapt so quickly, the industry is not paying as much attention to antibiotics as they have in the past because the cycle, life cycle of those drugs don't last very long when another superbug comes along and they've got to become resistant and we have to get new drugs. I am interested in how cells talk to each other. How do they communicate? How do they adapt to their environment? And we call this cell signaling or messenger uh, systems. And if I could have the first slide here. There are numerous mutated organisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and they're resistant to most of our antibiotics these days. And they stop responding to kill the cells. There are thousands of new patient, of patients dying from these super infections. This is how cells talk to each other, and this is what I've been doing for a living for the past 50 or 60 years. Cells create messengers. It's like an internet system in your body. Here is a population of three different cell types that are going to talk to each other. If cell type 1 is a neural cell, the messenger is called a neurotransmitter. If it's an endocrine cell, we call it a hormone. If it's a macrophage or a blood cell or a lymphocyte, we call them growth factors, cytokines, chemokines. They're released and they go find their target. And in the target cell, in the membrane, is a protein that we call a receptor. And the messenger recognizes the receptor and detaches in a three-dimensional conformational fit like a key in a lock, and turns on the biochemistry to produce an intracellular second messenger. And while there are dozens and dozens of these first messengers, there are a modest number of intracellular second messengers, only five or six. And many of these messengers have received Nobel Prizes. It's been estimated some years ago that 40 or 50 percent of all the drugs in the U.S. market excluding antibiotics and vaccines, came from cell signaling pathways. They either mimic the pathway or block it. Some of these substances can come out of the cell, such as nitric oxide. It can go back in again, or it can regulate the biology of an adjacent cell, or it can travel through the bloodstream and be released at a distant site. Nitric oxide is a rather unique molecule as a messenger. It's a free radical and a gas. I'm not going to cover all the biochemistry, uh, but I want to tell you how it can be applied to medicine and biology. Patients with hypertension, diabetes, atherosclerosis, tobacco use, and perhaps obesity have blood vessels that don't make enough nitric oxide. And by understanding these pathways in biochemistry, we can figure out ways to treat these patients with either drugs or nutritional supplements, and there are a variety of ways to do it. And with 160,000 publications of nitric oxide since our discovery in 1977, I'm going to summarize where it's going. It's involved in tissue transplantation. 
there are some infections in gram-negative organisms that produce endotoxin that enhance the production of nitric oxide, vasodilation, and blood pressure drops, they go into septic shock. It inhibits the aggregation of platelets. It regulates the secretion of hormones from the pituitary. It regulates the release of insulin from your pancreas. It regulates genes. It influences stem cell proliferation differentiation, and it even regulates cancer cell proliferation and metastases. It does a lot of interesting things, and you can incorporate this molecule as a new approach to treat infections. It has antifungal properties, antiviral no properties, antibacterial. No it's a vasodilator as it plays a role in hypertension and blood flow. It can regulate wound healing. It regulates cytokines and chemokines and lymphocytes talking to each other. And my